Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah and today I'm going to do a short video for you on cold thermogenesis or CT. I'm going to touch on some of the quantum aspects as in how does it work in the, at the level of the electrons, but also how does it work uh, in the mitochondria and what are the benefits and what are the caveats. So the reason I got into it about two years ago was that I went through a phase of ketogenic diets weren't working for some people. And also I found that mine wasn't working as well. And I decided to explore the, the CT or the cold therapy. And of course I did it wrong loads of times uh, for about a year. And then when I got to understand to the quantum level, I started to make a lot of progress with it. So I'm a very big advocate of cold thermogenesis. So cold thermogenesis is basically the practice of exposing the body to temperatures below body temperature for health benefits. And even one degrees C or one degrees Fahrenheit still counts as CT. So people do it to lower inflammation uh, for fat loss, uh, mental health, especially depression and addiction and things like binge eating, it can be helpful there. Also for immune function, and this is obviously important at this time of the year in the UK and other places in uh, over on this side of the world. Also for mitochondrial function, and I'll get into this in more detail, also diabetes and the reason how cold therapy can help with diabetes is actually really interesting at the level of leptin and insulin and how fat cells and other hormones respond to the cold. And also leptin resistance. So leptin resistance is very strongly driven by light. That's the main driver. But then cold thermogenesis is an important part of resetting leptin as well. So leptin is an appetite and weight hormone, if you have never heard of it before. And yes, when you eat does play a role with leptin, as in not to eat too often, as in three meals a day is enough because we've got leptin receptors in the skin. But also, again, not eating before bed because insulin will interfere with leptin. But primarily leptin is a light uh, driven pathway. But I found cold thermogenesis to be massively helpful for people who are still stuck with leptin resistance or stubborn weight problems. And the way it works is sort of initially when we talk about body fat is it turns the white adipose tissue into the metabolically active brown adipose tissue or called BAT. And that's kind of the first step that the white tissue is inert and it needs to be browned or beige before we can, uh, it can function metabolically. So there are a few interesting things about CT. So basically our brown adipose tissue is in our upper backs, upper neck and under the clavicle. So if you're doing any kind of cold therapy, you need to make sure those areas get uh, exposed to the cold, whether it's the air or the water. And then as most people know, babies do have a lot of BAT. That's why they tend to not like to wear clothes and tend not to get cold. And being warm all the time, as in central heating and making artificial summers in the winter, will reduce your BAT, your, your brown fat. And people with obesity and diabetes have been found quite often to have less uh, brown fat. And brown fat is Mother Nature's sort of solution for diabetes. So it can be massively helpful if you're insulin resistant or diabetic. And part of this or of this is because insulin doesn't work properly or even at all in the cold. So cold therapy can increase not only leptin sensitivity, but also it can improve insulin sensitivity as well. And when we talk about other neurotransmitters and hormones, uh, CT can in increase things like dopamine and noradrenaline. And that's kind of why people get addicted to cold therapy, but also why it's so helpful for a lot of people with mental health situations. So uh, dopamine is very strongly in implicated in, in depression. Now, when we come to the quantum level, cold temperatures slow down molecular actions in the body and cold improves electron flow. And it's a phenomenon called the Hall effect. And interestingly, cold water has a higher oxygen content. And that's why sort of very large, you find very large sea creatures at the poles and kind of smaller ones at the equator. And then just a general daily life thing, we've all overheated our phone and then it stopped working. But then when you cool it down or put it in the freezer, magically it starts working again, because once again, the semiconduction in the device is once again functioning. And again, we are biological semiconductors ourselves. Being in the cold makes your mitochondria function more efficiently. So let's look at that. 
OK, so here we have our electron transport chain with the five complexes or the five steps. So, so the electrons go in either at complex one or complex two, depending on um, where the electrons came from. And what happens is uh, under circumstances where there's a problem in the mitochondria, they can become swollen. So the distances between these complexes where the electrons need to flow, the current gets bigger. And this can cause inflammation and problems because the electrons can escape and act, well, they be implicated or act as free radicals. I'm not saying free radicals are all bad, but too much of them when the mitochondria are swollen becomes a problem. However, when we make the mitochondria cold, it's almost a contraction effect. So we can describe CT or cold therapy as contractile. So it brings these complexes closer together. So the distance between the complexes, step one, two, three, and four, becomes shorter. So now when the electrons or the current go down the electron transport chain, it's much easier for them to produce the exclusion zone water at complex four and the ATP at complex five. So we can see here how the, the cold and the contraction improves the mitochondrial function and the, the electron flow. And anything that can improve mitochondrial function is going to be massively beneficial for your overall health. When it comes to CT and exercise, is CT even worth it when it comes to energy expenditure? So Dr. Cruz has done a lot of work in the field of quantum biology, including cold thermogenesis. And one of the things he said was, consider this, um, tw a 26 mile marathon burns about 2,600 calories and his three hour cold therapy training session he did burned 3,800 calories. This is really important that Dr. Cruz is cold adapted. He was doing a ketogenic diet at the time. He worked up to doing three hour ice baths um, in a day and he's done it longer than I have, but I've been at it for two years. So it's really important not to just copy him or me or Wim Hof or, or somebody that you follow on the internet because uh, CT can be dangerous. This is like a sort of warning about with cardiac situations um, and it also can be really unproductive if you do too much of it when it's too cold, especially if you're in the, an equatorial area or you've got a coupled um, haplogroup group or haplotype type of mitochondria. But it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means li like anything, including exercise, you need to build up to it. You need to do what's appropriate for you so you don't hurt yourself or stress you out because if self out, because if you make the water too cold, uh, again, that could be a problem for sort of frostbite in your fingers and your toes. So now you may be interested in how do I start doing uh, cold thermogenesis? And remember, anything below your body temperature is going to be CT because you, you've got to effectively your mitochondria get revved up a bit to warm you back up. So, so on that subject, sometimes just doing a little bit now and again, it can be sort of like uh, getting the ignition to start um, in a car, so, so in a say in an old car, and, and it turns over a bit, but doesn't actually fire. And then eventually the engine starts to fire up and off you go. So that, that can be the example for somebody who's got a really sluggish uh, metabolism and they're not cold adapted, that they're, they're not um, using energy efficiently in the body. And again, for people who want to use uh, cold thermogenesis for weight loss, you first need to turn the inactive white fat um, into brown fat. So you don't need to go super cold uh, for this. So it's just a, allowing your body to be able to access this body fat. But also, like I said before, when you do cold thermogenesis, your body's going to produce more noradrenaline or norepinephrine. And this in simple terms is really important for cracking open fat cells to get the fat out. And genetically, we do have variations in our receptors, our adrenaline receptors or norepinephrine receptors. So that's why some people's fat is just more stubborn as in it won't, won't go. And on the subject of fat, something else that's really interesting about deep CT is it can actually kill or get rid of the old fat cell. So some people have lost a lot of weight. So the fat is not in the cell anymore, but the cell itself is still there. And these old inflammatory fat cells um, can also be insulin resistant. So that's why some people find they can't lose the last bit of weight or they've still got blood sugar issues, even though they've lost a lot of weight and cold Thermogenesis is a really good way to actually cause apoptosis of these um, old fat cells because uh, we can keep the same fat cell for, for decades. Um, so that's just something I 
just wanted to add there. Now, cold thermogenesis can be practiced in loads of different ways, from cold showers, ice baths, even just drying yourself um, in the shower from the shower without a towel. So when it comes to the medium of transfer, being immersed in water is, is going to create a better uh, transfer because the conductance rate of the cold is higher. So that means being immersed is better and the shower, some of it's water and some of it's air. So they're not effect as effective, but they're not useless either. Uh, and I would say like a minimum of three minutes to get started and remember to put it on your back and your front. But some people may not even be at that stage. Some people might need to just do a cold face plunge or cold water on the wrists because people who've got adrenal fatigue can do cold thermogenesis, but not anything difficult to start with. So they would start with something like cryotherapy because it's short and sharp, um, but it's not sort of uh, initiatives, it's not stressful like going in a lake or the sea because it's a bit like exercise. Exercise is really good for us, but it is uh, a hormetic stressor as well. And, and again, if people have got things like um, multiple autoimmune situations or adrenal fatigue, they don't really want to be stressing themselves out early. So they have to build up gradually. For people who can't bear the idea of going in the sea or a lake, especially at this time of the year, uh, or even in the cold bath, wearing a wetsuit or compression clothes can be a good place to start start and then like I said even just drying in the air without a towel or, or being naked more often in the privacy of your own home is still going to be doing cold thermogenesis and if you can't do any of that just turn your heating down um, a bit and maybe open some windows to get the cold and the light in and there are lots of studies in the literature on cold thermogenesis and, and one of the original kind of good ones was in a prestigious journal cell in 2013 and it was uh, researchers found that lowering the core temperature of warm-blooded animals such as mice by just um, almost one degrees f could extend the lifespan so there's the anti-aging component to doing cold thermogenesis and what was interesting was it's, they even found that just cold air alone can activate um the TRPA1 channel, and this is found in nerves and fat cells, and this was nematodes they were studying. So I appreciate it's not humans. And they found that this particular channel was able to activate the DAF16 and FOXO genes, which are implicated in longevity. So even just cold therapy using air, as in you being wet and, and the air drying you, is going to have some beneficial effect. I hope you found this informative. So the reason I'm so into cold therapy is because where I live, I don't have the, the best of sun uh, because I'm in the UK. So I have to rely on other natural methods. And I use the cold thermogenesis a lot on myself. And I suggest it to all of my clients and help them with the protocol. Because as I said, if you just go and jump in a lake now in, in October uh, without any clothes on, it, and you've never done CT before, it would be kind of horrible and probably not a good idea at all. So there's particular ways to build up to it and times and temperatures and um, ways of eating certain foods and timings of foods that can make your CT more effective and just more comfortable because it might not, it, you might be uncomfortable to start with, but it's the kind of thing you feel better later. So if you're interested in this and learning more about it, then uh, get in touch and I'll be able to help you. So thanks for watching.